Voices of Leaders is here at ITB Berlin to bring you the latest from ministers and CEOs of tourism boards. This year, Indonesia is playing an important role in co-hosting the event, and Voices of Leaders brings you an exclusive interview with Her Excellency Mari Elka Pangestu, Minister of Tourism for Indonesia. We are going to develop 80 destinations until 2025. For the next three to five years, we are focusing on 16 destinations. Uh, and that means uh, developing the physical infrastructure, as well as the ICT infrastructure, the human uh, resources, uh, and the travel industry itself. Uh, so we, we also promote to the private sector so that they'll start developing the hotels and training the people. Uh, so it's, it has to be a, a holistic approach. The Director General for the World Trade Organization uh, has a job to safeguard the global trading system so that you have uh, global rules, one simple global rule and not many, many rules which will be very high cost for businesses as well as for uh, countries. Uh, so uh, including tourism because tourism is a trade and services uh, sector and e-commerce because increasingly you, know, you are uh, purchasing uh, a lot of services online uh, and paying online so e-commerce component of the, uh, the travel and tourism industry is also another area where we hope we can develop uh, uh, the rules that will make uh, the services sector really grow uh, because it's it's going to generate so much employment you know tourism is already generating one out of 12 jobs in the world you know if we can continue to grow it uh, it, it is really going to be amazing for uh, the, the economic impact you can find countless wonders in Indonesia whether it's our UNESCO cultural heritage our natural beauty our cultural heritage our cloth our culinary and so on and so forth I can go on and most importantly, uh, uh, it's the people, and the people who are really the heart of wonders because they have been taking care of the nature, they are the ones who keep the cultural uh, heritage alive and, and maintain the local wisdom, such as the rice irrigation fields in Bali. They have been doing that for centuries and they're still doing it. Uh, and that we work with our whole heart and we also will welcome you with our whole heart. One of the major objectives of uh, co-hosting this is that as a member of the UNWTO, Zambia and Zimbabwe have been given an opportunity to use this as a means of uh, advertising, showcasing our rich countries in terms of tourism. And uh, we hope that uh, we can effectively actually get people to come over to Zambia and Zimbabwe and also to uh, beyond participating in the General Assembly, be able to get the world to know what Zambia has to offer in terms of uh, tourism. The government of the Republic of Zambia has come up with policies that want to support uh, tourism. To that effect, we are doing a lot of infrastructure developments and uh, most of these are targeted in areas where there's tourism and the Livingstone, where the Victoria Falls is, is, is housed, where the, which, which is the home of the Victoria Falls, has been declared as our tourist capital. And because of that, we are doing a lot of uh, improvements to Livingstone to make it um, uh, more accessible to uh, our visitors. And um, because we are targeting uh, tourism as a sector for job creation, we have a lot of opportunities that have arisen in that sector uh, in terms of uh, airways, air travel, just general transportation, um, uh, infrastructure like hotels, lodges, 
as you know, Zambia has many beautiful sites that need expansion, needs development. Zambia, like many African countries, uh, have a firm belief that um, we, there can be no genuine development without the participation of women, without the participation of the youths, without the participation of the uh, differently challenged persons. And so we have policies that have been put in place and programs that have been put in place by government to ensure that we have active participation of women. When it comes to elective positions, most, many Zambian women now are rising at different political levels, at the local level and national levels. And um, our president has taken affirmative action to deliberately appoint women in many different sectors of our country, you know, so that women can, can fully participate. And in terms of the ministries, we, we have the Minister of Tourism, this woman here, okay. Uh, we have uh, the permanent secretary in my ministry is a female. The directors in my ministry are all female. <laughs> We are even looking for men now, so it just tells the shows to balance up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, 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 there is a, a actually a deliberate policy in our country to involve women in all the sectors. Whilst uh, uh, there's been an improvement generally, we still are, are struggling as women to ensure that we sustain the women, especially when it comes to political positions in parliament, in the local authorities, and so on and so forth. But when it comes to the other sectors, I think we, 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 we are in some cases even above the 30%, we are at 50% in some sectors. So yes, I think women are very important, and especially now as we celebrate the Women's Week, I think it's a, an appropriate question. And I think that the, the struggle for the emancipation of women uh, must continue because um, not just in Zambia but I think all over the world we still have a number of um, challenges towards women's participation. Having attained our second decade into development we see this period as one of transforming the economy and tourism is one of the sectors that we are going to use. Why? Because tourism enhances opportunities for employment, tourism generates uh, foreign exchange, it brings tax revenue for, go for the government and as a result uh, the socio-economic uh, uh, development of the country is attained. Therefore, the government has thought it necessary that this next decade will be the decade for the agenda for prosperity, because tourism brings prosperity to the country. The president has seen it very necessary that tourism becomes one of the sectors that will transform the economy and the lives of the people. And the, the current process we are in is working towards that agenda. There are a lot of hotels being built. For example, um, the Radisson is going to get involved in Sierra Leone. They are going to do a 180-bedroom hotel. And after that, you're going to have uh, the Hilton, which is going to do a 200-bedroom. Because what we are looking for is to meet the challenges of the industry. There's, there are not enough first-class hotel beds or facilities. We want those. We want the restaurants. We want the casinos. We, so there's a lot of opportunity. We are providing land. We are providing also the enabling environment. Because Sierra Leone is, is moving very gradually on the doing business index. Why? Because the government is providing incentives, tax holidays, duty-free concessions, and we are preparing the enabling environment to attract investment into Sierra Leone because we know we are competing with other states and we know we come from a very difficult period. Therefore, how do we attract investment? It's by encouraging investors, providing them the investment opportunities and also providing the enabling and stable environment. So this is what we are trying to do. So there's considerable opportunities to invest in the infrastructure, to invest in the superstructure, to also in, invest, like what you're doing, in rebranding the country. It's very important. So 
we're looking at uh, Europe generally, America, Japan, Korea, and uh, also Australia, which has always been our main investors, and we are seeking more and more investment. Visit Malaysia Year 2014 is our attempt to kickstart a massive tourism campaign that will support the kind of development that is planned. 2014 will start by telling the whole world that we, One Malaysia has got a very successful and vibrant tourism industry which now has the capacity to grow even more. Our long-term target is to have 36 million tourists contributing some 168 billion ringgit or in US you have to divide that by three it's about 40 billion US dollars uh, contributed annually by the year 2020 so both investment and effort to promote will be put on top gear Ethiopia is now uh, moving fast in, in its economic development, in infrastructure. Therefore, along with this pace of development, tourism is also uh, getting better conditions and attention. Therefore, when we are saying that we are uh, trying to be one of the five top uh, destinations in Africa, we mean that we have diversified resource, we have diver diversified culture, nature, and Ethiopia is still uh, undiscovered. In short, Ethiopia is a microcosm of Africa. So that is why we are planning to be one of the five uh, tourist destinations with all these opportunities and uh, resources that we have. And uh, we are also moving very fast in uh, accommodation facilities, in uh, transportation facilities, and in many respects the government is focusing on the enhancement of infrastructure, which is also beneficial for tourism. One of our uh, offering to the tourism is uh, it's a really highland uh, and mountainous and very scenic beauties. The, the place where uh, the ancient human species are found, like Lucy and other, you know, a lot of uh, archaeological discoveries are taking place in one small area. That is also another important point. The other important uh, aspect is culture. We have multitude of languages, multitude of cultures, which is uh, really uh, a site that you can see in a very specific place. Therefore, coming to Ethiopia uh, will not be very much uh, on nature as well, it is also on culture. So you'll uh, benefit more of the culture, which is very much diversified, uh, which are living harmoniously. So coming to Ethiopia is uh, really uh, it's not a very uh, specific site and product, it is a very diversified one. So with this all opportunities and resources, we are hoping that we can move faster and we can achieve better so that we'll improve our status in the tourism uh, rank. We voted the best tourism board in Africa, it's not an easy thing because there are so many other African countries that are also promoting, aggressively promoting tourism. And for us as a country, we obviously feel proud about this. The thing about Kenya is that we are unique in a number of ways. For example, when you talk about safari, you cannot talk of safari without mentioning Kenya. It's an important sector, it's actually a number one foreign exchange, so it's a really a key sector. Uh, the plans are we're diversifying, uh, our main aim now is beyond the gorillas, which we were known for. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, new products uh, that we want to, to start. Uh, this year alone we plan to have cave tourism, which will be launched, and tea tourism. And uh, one other uh, big market that we're looking at is the mice market. Uh, we are currently building um, a convention center, uh, which uh, we think will, will be you know, one of its kind in the region. 
and uh, with that the Convention Euro which we're launching this year that will be able to attract um, uh, more of uh, you know conferences into the country exhibitions there are two, two ways of, of uh, investment opportunities that we look at one is that we really do have some hotels that are operating in the country but looking for uh, operators that have experience in the sector and a, lo a lot of uh, the investors that we really have most of them uh, you know in the locals are actually willing to partner and look for uh, partners who can help them but we also have uh, a resort area that we want to develop we are in the final stages of developing a resort area which we call the Kivu Belt uh, which is uh, you know really takes the whole country from north to south uh, uh, and, and, and links two of our main areas which are where the gorillas are close to where the gorillas are found and then one of our the, the second biggest park that we have which is the Nyunga National Park so uh, around that area there's it's we have a, what we call in the Kivu Belt because it's a Lake Kivu but it's a Riviera circuit that we want to be able to create <laughs> We are fortunate to be hosting the World Adventure Travel Summit this year in late in October. In fact, uh, we are trying to recoin the whole issue around the way people are defining adventure because it is seen more often as an activity that is more adrenal driven and it's for people who have the macho-ness in them uh, participating in this type of... But we're saying in our case in Namibia, as much as we have the vastness and openness of land, uh, we are offering soft adventure. The, the vastness and the expansiveness and the openness of the country is more or less backing the issue that it is an endless horizon. And basically, as I said, even if you want to find your inner peace, it's just up to you to what extent can you stretch yourself. So whatever you want to do in Namibia and experience, it's to your own limits. Uh, therefore, it's an endless horizon. You, whatever you can think of and how you want to package your own experience, you have the full right to, to design and determine your own journey as you are traveling through Namibia. Leaders.com is delighted to have brought you these unique voices and their business opportunities. We hope you got inspired.